Hey everybody, Chris here. Welcome back to another episode of Woodmere Estate Revival. I'm back down at the house today. This is day two of our garage floor removal project. We had a skid steer with a concrete breaker in there yesterday, busting up the elevated portion, busting up the slab, and thank goodness we did. There was a lot of issues hidden underneath that slab. In some places, the concrete was only poured two inches thick. The reinforcing wire wasn't even embedded in the concrete. Uh, there was poorly compacted soil underneath. There were mouse nests underneath. The uh, floor, we found all kinds of insulation and nuts and everything where they've been living in the cavities under the floor. So again, it was poorly compacted. It settled and then it created cavities for vermin to uh, infest. So, so glad we got all this tore out. It's gonna make for a much better end result. Let me show you where we're getting started today. So this is what things look like right now. Uh, I was just in here tearing out the workbench and getting that thing out of here. It was just uh, somebody's old trappy kitchen cabinets that they had stuck in here at some point to use as a a potting cabinet or something um, but look at the size of the mouse nest that was underneath it holy smokes I flipped this thing over and that rolled out that thing was enough for uh, eight or ten mice they've had a real paradise around here anyways you can see what's left of the slab this is uh, the old utility room that's where the furnace ducts actually, actually went down through the slab and then into the crawl space underneath the bathroom and then got a couple of uh, pieces here right here by the door to get rid of but the rest of it's gone. Everything else is in the dumpster. So if you look around here, you can see uh, there's some pea gravel that they had poured down underneath it. They did have a vapor barrier, but they did not dig down deep enough through this old clay and, and trashy soil to get real good compaction. So the fill that they put in here it was too high, allowed for too thin of a slab, and then uh, it was poorly compacted, so the stuff just kind of fell away after the slab hardened. So you can see some of the loose stuff I got to get away from the side of the house here. This is the wall going into the kitchen and dining room. Here's the door that goes into the kitchen just to give you a frame of reference. But this is where that elevated portion was. You can see the line on the the paint there. That's where that old elevated portion was and it was in line with the door that used to be here that came out into the garage. Now this area is going to be framed up. We'll have a bit of a crawl space underneath here just like the rest of the house. Uh, we'll encapsulate it that way we don't have any water issues. Speaking of which we found tree roots and everything else under here yesterday when we were digging this out. But this area all gets framed up and it will be even with the floor coming out of the house. This will be Amber's new butler's pantry and then over at the far side there that'll be the new, new utility room and then going down this way through what used to be the bathroom. This will be the bathroom hall so it'll go down uh, towards the end of the garage there and this where this wall is will be a new set of stairs that will go up into the bonus room that we're building on top of the garage so really it was the best thing to go ahead and tear all this slab out you can see where the uh, slab was here it was higher than the wood framing our original contractor came through replaced it all the rotten wood and when they put all that back it was at the same level as the uh, the original framing but you can see why we had some, some issues with uh, structure here because the concrete actually set up higher than the framing. So we're going to have to come in and probably go up a block and then put the new framing for the hallway and the bathroom and everything up on block rather than down on the uh, next to the slab. So anyways, i got to get this last uh, piece tore out here. I'm going to get started by hauling this stuff to the dumpster and then uh, we'll fire the machine up and start busting up the rest of this concrete and get it out. Okay, time to say bye to the cabinets. Nice. All right, so here's what I got done so far. I just took the breaker off, put the bucket back on, and getting ready to get all this stuff loaded up hauled over the dumpster and once I get that done then I'll be able to get in here and get down to my final grade and start bringing in buckets of gravel to give a good base for the new concrete floor but uh, more of the same over here you know real thin floor in places um, again poorly compacted substrate there's an old floor drain over here it didn't work anymore a long time ago I'm sure it quit you can see uh, around the duct work here there were some big pores here I mean the concrete was six eighteen inches thick around the ductwork so that was fun to break up thank goodness for the uh, concrete breaker on that skid steer otherwise I'd have been here for a year trying to get all this stuff knocked loose so uh, hallelujah for that thing that was great 
but you can see I got quite a mess to get cleaned up and uh, I'm gonna get working on that get it in the uh, dumpster then I'll get in here and get scrape some of this dirt out of here too that way I can get a good course of gravel down before we go back with concrete at some point all right, so we got all the old uh, dirt and everything dug out from underneath where that elevated slab was. And you can see the watermark there on the, uh, on the brick. That's the, the line really where that damp soil was laying. So the paint line there is where the slab was. That's where our new flooring is gonna come across for the utility room and for the butler's pantry. Then we're gonna have a crawl space of sorts underneath probably have to dig this out a little bit more at some point and then uh, encapsulate this, keep the dampness out. But uh, this will be a great place to run duct work, electric, plumbing, all that sort of stuff out of the utility room and uh, provide us a nice uh, butler's pantry here for storage. And then we cut this down as well, several inches. It's been fun, hasn't it, Dad? Oh, it's been a great afternoon. Yeah, lots, lots of good, good laughs. <laughs> Trying to find that pot of gold around here. Find the pot of gold. We got the skid steer stuck in the yard and all kinds of fun today. But we got this dug down. And this is where the new bathroom is going to go. So you can see where the framing here, where it, where it ends here, it's going to go on across. And then there'll be a new bathroom and closet and stairs going upstairs to the uh, bonus room. So we're just going to do a little cleanup here around the entrance to the garage. Try to get this massive tree root out of the way. You can see this. The size of this thing it uh, came from this poplar tree over here when I was digging out around the foundation earlier this year I got into it here's the other end of it right there where it comes out from underneath the uh, driveway so it was going after water during the dry times and uh, found it in our crawl space and in under under the slab so that sucker went all the way across here and then we found one that went all the way over there uh, almost into the house. So that tree had been growing under here for a long time. But sorry, Mr. Poplar. We ended your fun. All right, well, we're going to get this cleaned up and then uh, get the machine loaded and ready to go back tomorrow. Well, folks, that just about wraps up this edition of Woodmere State Revival. This was day two of the garage floor removal, and it was great. The machine that we rented for the weekend did a fantastic job ripping out the concrete with the big concrete breaker. Did a great job digging out the soil underneath. We found a lot of hard clay and everything packed underneath the slab there in the middle. So I think that's what happened last time this slab was poured when the house was built. Uh, they got in there and got ready to pour this garage floor and they found all that clay and everything. And they're like, nah, we're not gonna dig that out anymore. And they just left it. And so what happened is they got a short pour. They only got, uh, they got four inches on the sides and maybe only two inches in the middle. And sure enough, that's where it cracked around the floor drain and everything else. So we got that dug down, got all that soil dumped uh, into the dumpster if it had a bunch of debris in it or over the hill uh, where we're storing some soil if it doesn't. And, uh, and that's worked out great. So let me show you around, show you exactly what we got done here today. All right, so here is the garage as it sits now. And it looks a lot different, obviously. Uh, you can see that line on the paint over there? That's where that concrete step was. And that went all the way across the back of the garage against the house there. You can see those holes in the block. That's where they had some rebar stuck in the side because there was nothing supporting that part of the slab. It still dropped anyways. Just the weight of it elongated those holes in the block and uh, it still, still managed to drop. This side, it was supported by this ledge so the slab around the, in the garage had not dropped at all. But again, it was just so thin that uh, it just cracked all over the place. It didn't help that there were massive tree roots under the uh, garage. This huge poplar tree out front of the house here uh, sent out roots all over the place. Uh, we had them in the crawl space. They went in around the sewer drain around the front of the house here. And then uh, they went in under the slab here in the garage around the drain for the slab. And then they came in here under the corner of the driveway and then into the garage. And there was a huge root right here. And it went across the soil here and then went all the way up here to the house. I mean, it was nuts. You can see the pile of tree roots I got laying out here. This is what I dug out of the garage. Look at the size of them. I mean, those are massive. So the pressure of those underneath and then a thin slab 
and then poor support in places. Uh, as we mentioned before, there were mouse nests and everything else under there because the soil had been poorly compacted in places and it just fallen away and mice were living under there. It was great. Anyway, so we got this all dug out. I'm sure the contractor's gonna wanna come in and uh, do some handwork in places, maybe wanna take this down a little further because this is now gonna be a crawl space. As I mentioned before, this is gonna be bathroom, uh, closet, and stairs going up to the bonus room. We'll come up through here. You can see where the original crawl space stopped. That block was busted out by the builder all those years ago because that's where the HVAC, HVAC the uh, heating and air conditioning ducts, went into the crawl space right there and then shot across the house. The old furnace set right here. So we're gonna have to fix that wall and they'll probably wanna extend the foundation wall across here, over to this side over here, and then put their plates and everything else on top of that and then pour a new slab here in the center of the garage. They may want to do the same thing over here. They may want to dig out, do a footer, and run a course of block across here. And again, put their plate and then do their floor joists on top of that. So imagine those guys are going to have to come in and do some work, but uh, we did a lot this weekend for them, and hopefully that's going to save them some time and us some money. That's the idea behind all of this anyways. Uh, again, good thing we tore all this out because it's hard to see because it's getting dark, but this... Uh, Electric service is just sopping wet, and the pipes are all rusted. The conduit are all rusted and uh, eaten away. So I think the mast seal on the outside of the house failed years ago, and this thing's just been full of water. Because as soon as we uh, uncovered it, water was just coming out of it. It was nuts. So uh, again, all this is getting replaced anyways because we're doing a 400 amp service instead of this 200 amp, and there'll be a a new mast put up on the outside of the house over there and that'll run across over here because the new utility room goes over here on this side of the house. So again, very productive weekend overall. Thank you guys so much for tuning in on this uh, episode of Woodmere Estate Revival. Be sure to hit that subscription button so you don't miss a single episode going forward. Lots more to come. Uh, we're probably going to have two, three hundred episodes by the time this project is done and we're moved into the house. Um, so, I mean, just stay with us. It's, it's going to get uh, even more interesting as we start to put this house back together. Appreciate you hanging out with us today. Be sure to give us a like. If you got any questions, comments, leave those in the space below. We always like to hear from our viewers. And as always, please share this uh, with your friends and family. Spread the word about Woodmere State Revival. We're having fun sharing this with everybody and love to have more viewers and interaction with everybody. So keep watching and uh, we'll see you guys again real soon. Thanks.